Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the question why phenol gives different brominaton products in different solvents. So depending on what kind of solvents you have taken, whether you have taken polar solvent, water as an example, or you, if you have taken non-polar solvent, that is mainly organic solvent, then product is different. But what is the reason behind that? That we are going to see. So first of all, we have to know that bromination of phenol, it is what kind of reaction? So it is electrophilic aromatic substitution. That means here the attacking reagent that is electrophilic in nature. So it is electron deficient. So here I am drawing the structure of phenol. And in general, if I write the electrophile, it will be something like this. That is E plus. So here attacking reagent is electrophile. It is electron deficient species. So obviously it will search for some electron dense region. So when OH is attached to benzene ring, it is basically activating the ring by its plasar effect. So here this part that is nucleophilic and this part is the electrophilic. Now when E plus is fixed and in this side that is in the nucleophile side, if somehow the nucleophilicity is increased, so obviously the attack by the E plus that will be highly favored. So that is actually occurring here. So this is the main reason behind it why when we are using low polarity solvents such as carbon disulfide, CCL4, CHCl3 and also low temperature. That means you are providing less energy. In that case, it is monobromination that you can see in the left hand side. So you can obtain para product or you can obtain ortho product. But the important point is you are getting monobromination. Okay, though para product is because of static reason it is, uh, it will be the major one. But important point is it is mono substitution. But when it is polar solvent like water, now you are getting tri substitution. That means here the nucleophilic character of this, uh, that is a nucleophile, which is basically phenol in our case. Its nucleophilicity will be increased when you are using this condition. That is when it is solvent of high polarity. Now we will compare these two condition. So what is the difference that we are going to see? When it is non-aqueous medium, phenol does not ionize in this medium. That means phenol which is PHOH, there is a chance of this type of dissociation O minus H plus. But when it is non-aqueous solvent, this type of dissociation, that is not possible. But in aqueous medium, this is possible, though it is not fully ionized, that is not 100%, but partial ionization is possible. That means now in this medium, in aqueous medium, chance of getting PHO minus, which is phenoxide, that chance is high. Now, if it remains in this negatively charged form, that is PHO minus, obviously its nucleophilic character compared to the non-ionized form, which is PHOH, obviously it will be high. Now, if the electron density is high, the reaction with E plus, which is basically the electrophile, because it is electrophilic aromatic substitution. So that attraction will be high and that is why now the reaction will be favored. So that is why you are getting tribromination, that is tri substitution. The benzene ring of phenol is less activated if you, if you are using non-aqueous medium because it is not in ionized condition compared to phenoxide ion. And in the other side that is aqueous medium, now phenoxide ion is much more reactive than phenol itself towards electrophilic attack that means towards E plus though in our case E plus is Br plus and in non-aqueous medium the electrophile that is generated it is weak in nature and in aqueous medium the electrophile that is generated that is strong in nature that means the presence of Br plus with fully positive uh, sorry fully formed positive charge if it is present over bromine that means it is its electrophilicity is high Rather than if Br is existing like getting some partial positive charge. So obviously it will be weak because it is fully formed positive charge. It is partially formed positive charge. So this is better electrophile, right? So now we will see that when it is non-aqueous medium, now phenol as it remains in, uh, that is dissociation is not possible. So see, it is still holding this H and now the lone pair, over oxygen as we know it is ortho para orienting because 
uh, it increases electron density in ortho position and para position. So now when it is making double bond with carbon, negative charge will be high at any of this ortho position. So now it is attacking this uh, one of the bromine atom of bromine molecule. But see, this side is partially positive, this side is partially, sorry, it will be negative. Okay, so that is why it is not generating fully developed positive charge, but still there is some uh, polarity generated because both sides are actually same at all. So polarity that is generated that will not be very high, but as there is attack from the ortho position, so obviously when it will attack this bromine, there will be generation of partial positive charge. So this is uh, the structure that will be formed first and then there will be that is loss of aromaticity you can observe here in this step then this hydrogen will be removed in the form of H plus which is general mechanism of electrophilic aromatic substitution and there will be double bond formation in this position and oxygen that will be again neutral. So in this way we are getting uh, monobromination and in this case the ortho is shown you can also do the same mechanism for para. But what about the aqueous medium? Now when it is aqueous medium, bromine molecule in presence of water, it can form HBr. So 1H and 1Br, what is left? HO and Br. So it will be HBr plus HOBr. Now in HOBr, if you look carefully, there is also presence of Br plus, that is HO minus Br plus. That means now it is uh, strong electrophile and phenol that is now present in the form of phenoxide ion because what we have seen in the previous slide that in aqueous medium it remains in dissociated form. So now you have fully developed negative charge over oxygen. In the previous case what you have seen there is lone pair over oxygen but now it is fully developed negative charge right. So it will attack now this electrophile which is basically E plus in our case. Double bond O Br and H is present here. So this H will be removed as you have seen in the previous uh, mechanism also and finally there will be double bond OH and Br. So this is actually the first uh, mono substitution that we are seeing but as it can again ionize like this O minus Br. So as if you can treat it as if it is the uh, fast phenoxide but now it is uh, mono substituted phenol but it can uh, dissociate just like here you have seen the phenoxide and H plus. So the same mechanism is again possible now in presence of another Br plus. The same type of mechanism is also possible towards the other ortho position and also the phenol. So now it can attack again. So now I am showing through para position. So in this way you will get now this hydrogen it will be removed just you have seen in this step same thing I am doing here Actually this H in this case it is uh, I shouldn't write it as minus H plus because this H is again uh, attaching towards this oxygen. So this is not right because this H it will now move towards oxygen. Further it can again dissociate and you can also do the same mechanism. Now the third bromine that can be inserted in the remaining ortho position. So in aqueous medium because of the higher nucleophilic nature of the phenoxide and compared to the uh, phenol molecule which is not dissociated form and also here the new uh, electrophile is very strong. So these are the reasons that is why in aqueous medium you are getting tri-substitution but in non-aqueous medium we are getting 
mono subscription. So this is the reason behind this question.